I'm Joy Morris, inviting you to listen to True Stories of the Wild West, hosted by C.R. King, a production of R.K. Enterprises. Hello, everybody. C.R. King here. Today, I want to tell you the story about Codwell and Mike Mater. The title, Run, Little Ones, Hell is in Session. Starting with Mike Mager, who happened to be the third man to ever be appointed as city marshal in Wichita, Kansas. That was on April 13th, 1871. Two things he did. A, or the first thing, build a jail. Second thing, put up signs all over town, no guns allowed, you must check your guns in. You can check them out when you leave. The whole idea was to curb violence and to have a caboose to house these guys for the trial. The killings were almost on a daily basis. Thievery, stabbings, you name it. Wichita was no different. The Maker boys, because Mike had a brother who looked like him, John Maker, were there. And they needed good help. And among those that they hired was a young Wyatt Earp. Yep, that's where he got to start. That was on April 21st, 1875, that he was officially hired. There is arguments by many of all historians that say that first he was a private policeman prior to this date. For in October 74, the Wichita City Eagle reported that he was, he meaning Wyatt, was working on behalf of M. R. Moser, collecting money. Erb and a fellow deputy by the name of John B. Rins was hired at the same time. Now, the paper also said hiring Wyatt Earp was a good thing, for they for he was declared by the paper to be a very effective policeman. Mike was on duty. Sylvester Powell was a stage driver who ran a daily bus around town. Yep. Hauled by horses, but it was a bus. He and a partner were celebrating January 1st a little early. and They became very drunk. He was arrested for public intoxication, and for arrest, or for assault, I should say. The assault was on a man who caught Powell trying to steal his horse. He broke this man's arm and threatened to kill him if he turned him in. Well, he did. He was arrested. Powell was later that evening bailed out of jail. He was upset kill Mike Mager. He found Mager. Mager was behind the saloon in an outhouse. outhouse. He was, you know, he was going potty. He hit Mager, or I'm sorry, Mager was in the outhouse and Pal was hiding behind some type of bin. Or, I mean, as Mager opened the door, Pal shot. Shot twice. <laughs> One bullet went through the man's coat, did not hit him, Mager. The other one, well, it breezed his, his body. He got a, a, a cut. That's about it. Powell tried again. When Mager grabbed his pistol, he shot, and this time he was hurt. Took the pistol away. Powell ran out the front. Actually, he didn't away. He was managed to pull it away when the shot went off. He still had the gun. Powell ran one way to get to the main street from out from the alley. Mager ran the other way. Mager ran right into him on Main Street, aimed and shot the man in the heart. Sylvester <laughs> Powell was dead. Now, this was the first man and the only man that Mike Mager ever shot and killed. 
as I said, he turned and ran and he was shot. What happened here is Mike, like I said, it was his one and only killing. It was a self-defense act. And he knew one day this may come back to haunt him. The cattle boom of Wichita lasted until 1880. The cattle were being replaced by homesteaders. And parts of the Chisholm, Chisholm Trail was bob wired by fences to protect the crops of these homesteaders. The railroad had extended to Dodge City, which had become the new destination for drovers. Saloon owners, gamblers, prostitutes, and merchants were all who were all directly involved in making a living from the cowboys moved their operation to Dodge. Well, with the end of the Wichita heyday, Mike, the five-term term marshal, left for Indian Territory. Yep, he was an old, well, what would become known as Oklahoma. He was there for a short time. He worked as a deputy marshal out of Fort Reno. Didn't really care for it. So, he quit that job. And Mike and his brother moved to Conwell, Kansas. It was a town just barely above the border of Kansas and the Indian Territory. Well, it has it happened. The Crowley Summer and Fort Smith Railroad came to Conwell. It was in the spring of 1880. And that's when, April, that Mike and John moved to the town. The Chisholm Trail was forked off so it could serve both cities, Dodge City and Conwell. Conwell would soon become known as the Border Queen. Mike was married a year before that, a couple of years before that, and he and his wife sensed that Conwell was the place to be. He and Ginny set up shop. He got himself a partner, and he opened up the Arcade Saloon. It was on Main Street, halfway between 5th Street and 6th Street. It was in the, the location was in the heart of the city. On April 5th, 1880, Mike Mager was elected mayor, the third man to be such. He was the third man back in Wichita to be such. Interesting. Well, as he found out, Codwell was much more troublesome and violent than Wichita could ever imagine. So Mike knew, because of all of the problems, that his time was up. He did not ever want to run for the office again. So at the end of his term, he was a saloon owner. December 17th, 1881. It was a quiet Saturday. Codwell was in for another incident. Run, you little ones. Hell is in session. Hide out, little ones. That was the voice of Jim Talbot. His real name was James Daniel Sherman. He stood in the middle of the street at the northwest corner of 5th and Main. He had a gun in each hand. He knew who he, who he wanted to kill. And by God, he was going to have his way. His mark was Mike Mager. For Mike Mager was the man who killed Sylvester Powell. And Sylvester and Jim Talbot grew up together. They were cousins. They were like brothers. And he hated Mike Mager. Well, Talbot shot at those whoever was in the town on the boardwalk. He didn't care who they were. He shot anybody that was in his way. Two other of his gang of seven joined him. It was like a an arrow, if you will. Talbot was in the front. The two guys were side by him, just a step back. 
And they walk very, very slowly down Main Street, shooting every which way they could. The guys of Conwell ran in. There was two general stores. Those store owners gave them weapons and ammunition so they could go out. And for the next two hours, it was total chaos. People were shooting each at each other all over the place. Never heard of any, anything like this. And before we go any further, no, no, that Codwell was one of the top 12 cow towns that goes down in, 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 in history as a great part of the Wild West. So it was a triangular show of force. Bill Fawcett, who was just appointed assistant town marshal, was involved shooting back at these men. There was three people, two almost the whole time, and, and Talbot as a third, that had Bill Fawcett cornered. I guess they were afraid of him. He must have been known as a very good shot. Well, he was cornered. He couldn't do much, but he tried. Now, let's talk about the war on the border. The Talbot raid, which is, like I said, called Hell is in Session. Talbot had been in town for a month. He was gambling and drinking and bullying and attempting to bulldoze everyone. He was the leader of this party of seven. He had a wife. He had a little boy and a girl. They lived on Chisholm Street. Sorry about that. Chisholm Street in this city. Talbot was on a drinking spree during the night when Jim Martin... Bob Big Tree, Tom Love, Bob Munson, Dick Ellerman, and George Spears were with him. Now, Spears was in the act of saddling up one of Talbot's horses to help have Talbot get out of town because they knew they could not hold the town off any longer. Well, that man, somebody, well, citizen, a deputy, shot him, shot him in the heart. Didn't hurt the horse, but he was dead. So the eight men, that's a gate of seven plus Talbot, were armed and did the best they could. Now, moving on. Maker had always had that feeling that the shooting at Powell would come back and haunt him. He even mentioned it once, half out loud, half to himself, the day after he shot that man. It was overheard and it was noted. Talbot earned his living by racing his horse. He was five foot ten, lean, solid as a rock, and strong as an ox. Talbot raid was raging, and George Spear had just been shot and killed. Talbot had positioned himself behind a shed across from an alleyway behind Main Street. It was just south of Fifth Avenue or Fifth Street. He spotted Mike Mager. They exchanged gunfire. Mike moved to another position near a brick building that was next to a passageway that led to Main Street. Talbot had a clear shot. He was a good marksman. A marksman in first order, as they say. Talbot took quick aim with his Winchester, and he fired once. Striking Mager, the bullet ran through the fleshy part of his right arm, and it passed through both lungs. And Mager ran to get his horse. The town marshal, Marshal Wilson, and a citizen, Ed Rathburn, picked up Mike and put him on a, on a box to sit there. And they went back to rejoin the fighting. 
It probably was 20 minutes. They were, they were able to get Mike into safe, into a safe place at a barbershop, Shearer's Barbershop. And shortly thereafter, Mike died. He lived maybe between 20 to 20 to 30 minutes after having been shot. He was 38 years old. Jim Talbot had revenged his cousin's death. His cousin, again, Sylvester Powell. Mager was taken to Wichita, where he was buried in a family plot. Now, dozens of men were shooting of all kinds of firearms at, at the Talbot guy and his gang. And his course, as he knew it, was over with. He knew that he had to give up. Well, instead, he ran down, zigzagging every which way, falling down, rolling over, getting up, zigzagging. And he was, he successfully escaped being shot. He reached a point where his horse was. The outlaws played hell getting away, but they did. There were five men, four on horses, and a posse hot on their trail. In the course of the chase, two horses were wounded and one was killed. Bob Johnson, known as Doug Hill, was wounded in the heel of his foot. Well, when they could, they would commandeer fresh horses, and they did. It was difficult for the posse to get near enough to fire. Bulls were flying all over. The outlaws were able to mount these fresh horses, and they got themselves into a box canyon. The men stopped. It was a trap. They knew it. They did their best to surround it. They didn't have enough men to, to circle all the way around the box. There were still bullets being fired back and forth in this heart of the night. Talbot, Doug Hill, Bob Victory, and Jim Martin and Bob Munson escaped. Doug Hill was captured the following year and received a four-month prison sentence. Escaped. Doug Hill was captured the following year and received a four-month prison sentence. Jim Talbot, he was located. It took 14 years, but it says had died or moved away. And Talbot was set free. A citizen noticed and noted out loud to others that John Mager, Mike's brother, had followed Talbot as he left the courthouse to board a train. Now, we don't know if John Mager followed him on the train, but he definitely knew where he was headed. A year later, August 11th, 1898, as Talbot approached the gate of his ranch, shotgun blast killed him. Talbot lived by the gun. He died by the gun. There were two possible suspects, John Mager, and as some have claimed, Talbot's wife had a lover, and he killed the man. No name was ever mentioned who this lover was. Nothing ever came to light. As I said, Talbot lived by the gun, and he died by the gun. So be it. This is the end of this podcast. This is the last of the 12 major cow towns of Kansas, the Wild West of Kansas. I hope you enjoyed it. It's all true. I will be back with more tales of the Old West. Be safe. True. I will be back with more tales of the Old West. Be safe. Stay tuned for next week's tale.